Two teenagers are facing attempted murder charges for a shooting at a Bronx barber shop. Police say the shooting happened inside a shop on East Gun Hill Road around 6.45 October 22nd. While Kay Flock remains behind bars waiting for his case to start, rap fans already believe that he is cooked. As it turns out, there's damning CCTV footage that will see the young rapper serve the remainder of his life in prison. Will the young drill rapper clear his name or is his goose already cooked? Well, if the public's reaction to the surveillance footage is anything to go by, we may never see K Flock free again. So how did the rapper find himself in this position? K Flock behind bars. In a shocking turn of events, aspiring New York drill rapper K Flock has been charged with the barbershop murder of a 24 year old Harlem man. The incident, which took place in December 2021, sent shockwaves through the community and the music industry. On the morning of December 16th, tragedy struck in the heart of Harlem as a routine trip to the barbershop turned into a horrifying crime scene. 24 year old Oscar Hernandez, a young man with his whole life ahead of him, was waiting patiently for a haircut when his world was shattered by an act of senseless violence. According to reports, the events leading up to the murder began when 18-year-old Kevin Perez, known by his rap moniker K Flock, walked by the open door of the barbershop. In a seemingly innocuous interaction, Perez asked Hernandez what he was looking at. Little did anyone know that this simple question would ignite a chain of events that would end in tragedy. Curiosity getting the better of him, Hernandez stepped outside to confront Perez, hoping to gain some clarity on the situation. What started as a mere exchange of words quickly escalated into a heated argument, with tensions rising by the second. The atmosphere grew increasingly hostile as the two men engaged in a verbal altercation. As the argument reached its boiling point, Perez made a fateful decision that would change the course of both their lives forever. In a shocking turn of events, Perez pulled out a gun and shot Hernandez in the neck. The sound of the gunshot echoed through the quiet morning, leaving those nearby in a state of shock and disbelief. The barbershop, once a place of camaraderie and community, was now a crime scene. Panic and chaos ensued as people scrambled to seek safety and call for help. Hernandez, gravely injured, fought for his life as emergency services rushed to the scene. Despite their best efforts, the gunshot wound proved fatal, and Hernandez tragically succumbed to his injuries. The news of the barbershop murder spread like wildfire, sending shockwaves through the tight-knit Harlem community. Friends, family, and neighbors were left reeling from the senseless act of violence that had claimed the life of a young man with so much potential. The loss of Oscar Hernandez was deeply felt, and the community mourned the untimely passing of one of their own. In the aftermath of the shooting, the police swiftly launched an investigation to bring the perpetrator to justice. The initial focus of the investigation was on Kevin Perez, also known as Kay Flock, who was quickly identified as the prime suspect. Law enforcement officials worked tirelessly to gather evidence, interview witnesses, and piece together the events that led to the tragic murder. As the investigation unfolded, a chilling picture began to emerge. It was revealed that Kevin Perez had affiliations with the Bronx-based Third Side Gang, leading authorities to suspect that the shooting may have been gang-related. This revelation added another layer of complexity to the case, raising questions about the motive behind the murder. However, However, the story took another twist with the release of new video footage, raising further questions and prompting K Flock's attorney to demand a thorough examination of the evidence. On December 24th, Kevin Perez was taken into custody by the police, marking a significant development in the pursuit of justice. He was subsequently arraigned in Manhattan Criminal Court, where he faced serious charges against him. The arrest sent shockwaves through the community once again, as the alleged perpetrator of the barbershop murder now faced the weight of the criminal justice system. In the midst of the ongoing investigation, investigation, new video footage of the shooting emerged, providing potentially crucial evidence for the case. K Flock's attorney, Scott Lehman, demanded a thorough examination of the evidence and prompt disclosure of the videos referenced in the complaint, highlighting a significant disclosure made by the district attorney's office regarding a tip implicating someone else as the shooter. Yesterday, I accompanied Kevin as he self-surrendered to detectives in the 30th precinct, Flock's attorney, Scott Lehman, wrote in the statement. Arrangements were immediately made with NYPD once I learned he was wanted. As for the charges left against him, we have begun our own investigation into these allegations. More importantly, considering the DA's significant disclosure this morning that the NYPD received a tip saying someone else is the shooter, we demanded the DA's office provide prompt disclosure of the videos referenced in the complaint and more information on the tip. Seems like K Flock's friends didn't learn from his mistake as only a few weeks later, a close affiliate would also see himself behind bars, although for a different case. 
16-year-old reputed gangbanger and up-and-coming rapper known as C. Blue and affiliated with K. Flock, found himself at the center of a high-profile case. Charged with attempted murder for a police officer shooting, C. Blue's alleged involvement sent shockwaves through the Bronx community and beyond. The incident unfolded during a scuffle with 27-year-old NYPD cop Kasim Pennant after C. Blue refused to comply with officers' requests to remove his hands from his pockets. In the ensuing struggle, a single shot was fired, striking Officer Pennant in the leg and grazing C. Blue in the groin. Shooting happened on this block here behind me. The suspect is a known gang member, according to police, and get this, that shooting that happened between him and the officer, they were shot by the same bullet. It was a Tuesday night in the vibrant neighborhood of Belmont when chaos erupted on the streets. The NYPD received a complaint about a disorderly crowd gathering near Lorillard Place and East 187th Street. Responding to the call, officers from the 48th Precinct arrived at the scene, unaware of the dangerous situation that awaited them. Among the crowd was Cameron Williams, better known by his stage name, C. Blue. At just 16 years old, he had already gained notoriety as a reputed gangbanger and a rising star in the drill rap scene. As tensions escalated, officers approached C. Blue, requesting that he remove his hands from his pockets for questioning. However, what seemed like a routine encounter quickly spiraled out of control. C. Blue, perhaps feeling the weight of his reputation, refused to comply with the officer's order. A struggle ensued, with C. Blue fiercely resisting their attempts to detain him. In the midst of the chaos, a single shot rang out, piercing the night air. The bullet found its mark, striking Officer Kasim Pennant in the leg. As the officer fell to the ground, C. Blue himself was grazed in the groin by the errant bullet. The scene quickly descended into pandemonium as officers scrambled to secure the area and provide medical assistance to their wounded colleague. Meanwhile, C. Blue, now realizing the gravity of the situation, was taken into custody. The aftermath of the shooting left the Bronx community in shock. Officer Pennant, a dedicated member of the NYPD, was rushed to the hospital for treatment. Thankfully, his injuries were not life-threatening, and he was released the following day. As the dust settled, law enforcement sources revealed that C. Blue could potentially face an attempted murder charge from a grand jury. The stakes were high, and the Bronx prosecutors wasted no time in bringing the case before Judge Dennis Boyle. During the arraignment, Bronx prosecutors argued for C. Blue to be held without bail, citing the severity of the charges and the potential danger he posed to the community. However, Judge Boyle made the controversial decision to set bail at $200,000, much to the dismay of law enforcement officials. K. Flock has not experienced the same kind of luck as he continues to languish behind bars, despite his legal team trying to get him out on bond. His defense team recently requested that he be released on a staggering $1.4 million bail. While K. Flock's defense team argues that he has no significant criminal history and that he hasn't given authorities any reason not to trust him aside from his current charges, the severity of the allegations cannot be ignored. The prosecution has presented evidence and testimonies that paint a disturbing picture of the rapper's alleged involvement in violent crime. His defense team is proposing strict house arrest, GPS monitoring, posting significant properties, and a third-party custodian as conditions that would ensure his appearance in court and protect the public. The request for such a high bail amount and the proposal for house arrest have sparked a heated debate among fans and the general public. Some argue that K. Flock deserves a chance at redemption and that the proposed conditions are sufficient to ensure his compliance with the legal process. Others, however, believe that the severity of the charges against him warrants a denial of bail. There was hope in March 2022 that he would be released on bond after he took to his Instagram, where he posted a photo showing the outside of a local New York City correctional facility, which implied he was in the process of getting released. However, nothing came of it. In December the same year, he took to social media to tease his release again after a TikTok user uploaded a clip of someone getting a phone call from the Bronx native, in which the rapper can be heard dropping the news that he may be released while shouting out his friends. Why knows if it's wetty, Flock said during the call. I'll be back real soon, 2023 March, you heard? Still, the rapper remains behind bars, and things went from bad to worse for the rapper after he was hit with a Rico. In the world of hip-hop, where fame and success often go hand in hand, there are times when the dark underbelly of the industry comes to light, such as the case with rising rapper K. Flock, whose promising career took a shocking turn. Kevin Perez, known by his stage name K. Flock, was indicted on murder and racketeering charges, along with seven other alleged members of the notorious Bronx gang gangs, Sev side, and third side. The indictment, unsealed by Damian Williams, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, and Keechan L. Sewell, Commissioner of the New York City Police Department, reveals a web of criminal activities that have plagued these gangs for years. If convicted of all the charges against him, including racketeering conspiracy, murder in aid of racketeering, use of a firearm resulting in death, attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon in aid of racketeering, use of a firearm for attempted murder, and assault with a dangerous weapon, K. Flock could be facing a life sentence 
according to federal sentencing guidelines. The indictment paints a grim picture of the alleged crimes committed by K-Flock and his associates. It is alleged that Perez and his Sev side co-defendants became involved in the gang as early as 2017. But what sets this case apart from others is the inclusion of social media posts and song lyrics as evidence of criminal gang activity. In an era where artists often use their music and online presence to express themselves, these digital footprints have now become crucial pieces of evidence in criminal investigations. The charges against K. Flock are not limited to racketeering conspiracy. He is specifically charged with the murder of Huascar Hernandez, a tragic incident that occurred in Manhattan's Hamilton Heights neighborhood on December 16, 2021. The details surrounding Hernandez's death are chilling, and the indictment suggests that K. Flock and other alleged members of Sevside face additional charges related to this heinous crime. It is important to note that K. Flock is not alone in this indictment. He is just one of six alleged Sevside members charged in the recent indictment, while the remaining two defendants are believed to be affiliated with the Third Side gang and were charged separately. The impact of these charges extends beyond the courtroom. The indictment alleges that the members of Sev Side and Third Side have terrorized neighborhoods in the Bronx and Manhattan through acts of violence, including killings and shooting. The communities affected by these crimes have long suffered from the devastating consequences of gun violence. With these charges, the hope is to bring some semblance of justice and peace to these neighborhoods that have been plagued by these gangs for far too long. Rap and Crime K Flock's case reads from the same scripts as other cases involving high profile rappers such as 6ix9ine and Young Thug, especially involving the use of social media and lyrics as evidence in court. K Flock's RICO indictment cites social media posts and song lyrics as evidence of criminal gang activity. It is a chilling reminder of how these platforms can be used to not only express oneself, but also to potentially incriminate oneself. In the case of K Flock and his associates, their online presence has now become a damning piece of evidence against them. The prosecution argues that these social media posts and song lyrics provide insight into the mindset and activities of the alleged gang members. They paint a picture of a lifestyle steeped in violence, firearms possession, and fraud. It is a stark contrast to the glamorous image often associated with the world of hip-hop. The indictment alleges that these online expressions of criminal behavior are not mere artistic expression, but rather a reflection of the real-life actions of these individuals. One particular social media post mentioned in the indictment stands out. It is a photo shared by K. Flock, showing him posing with what appears to be a firearm. The caption accompanying the photo is equally disturbing, with explicit references to violence and gang affiliation. This post, along with others, is being used as evidence to support the charges of racketeering conspiracy and murder against K-Flop. But it's not just social media posts that are being scrutinized. Song lyrics, often seen as a form of artistic expression, are also being analyzed in this case. The indictment highlights specific lyrics that allegedly glorify violence and criminal activity. It is a reminder that words have consequences, and in this case, they are being used as evidence to build a case against K-Flop. Flock and his alleged associates. The role of social media in criminal investigations is a relatively new phenomenon, but it has quickly become an invaluable tool for law enforcement. It allows them to gain insights into the activities and connections of individuals, providing a digital footprint that can be used to establish patterns of behavior and association. In the case of K. Flock, these digital footprints have played a significant role in the indictment and the charges brought against him. However, it is important to note that social media posts and song lyrics alone are not enough to secure a conviction. They are pieces of a larger puzzle that law enforcement enforcement must carefully piece together. The indictment also includes evidence of violent crimes, firearms possession, and fraud, further supporting the charges against K. Flock and his alleged associate. The young rapper's life has been a roller coaster, from his upbringing in a tough neighborhood to experiencing what now looks like a short-lived rap career. K. Flock was born on April 20th, 2003, in the Belmont neighborhood of the Bronx, New York. Growing up in this vibrant yet dangerous area, K. Flock experienced the harsh realities of life from a young age. The Bronx, known for its rich cultural heritage and its influence on hip-hop music played a significant role in shaping K-Flock's artistic journey. Raised in a neighborhood plagued by crime and poverty, K-Flock witnessed the struggles and hardships faced by those around him. He often described his upbringing as dangerous, with the constant presence of violence and the need to navigate through challenging circumstances. Despite the adversity, K-Flock found solace in music, using it as an escape from the harsh realities of his surroundings. Family also played a crucial role in K-Flock's early life. He is cousins with fellow Bronx drill rapper Dethang Gs, who's real name is Daniel Collins. The bond between the two cousins extended beyond blood, as they shared a passion for music and a desire to make a name for themselves in the industry. Additionally, K. Flock's half-brother Jalvitz, also known as Johnny Hernandez, is another fellow Bronx drill rapper. Their shared experiences and love for music created a strong support system within their family. Growing up in the Bronx, K. Flock was exposed to the vibrant hip-hop culture that thrived in the borough. The Bronx has long been recognized as the birthplace of hip-hop, and its influence can be seen in K. Flock's music. He 
embraced the drill subgenre, characterized by its gritty lyrics and aggressive beats, which resonated with his own experiences and the realities of his neighborhood. As a young artist, K-Flock faced numerous challenges and obstacles on his path to success. The lack of resources and opportunities in his community made it difficult for him to pursue his musical aspirations. However, his determination and passion for music drove him to overcome these barriers. He began his music career in May 2020, releasing his first single, FTO, which showcased his raw talent and lyrical prowess. K Flock's early releases gained traction and caught the attention of listeners and industry professionals alike. He followed up with a string of successful songs, including Op Spotter, featuring B Lovey, Brotherly Love, featuring B Lovey and Dougie B, and PSA. These tracks showcased his unique style, captivating storytelling, and ability to connect with his audience. Despite his rising success, K Flock remained grounded and focused on his craft. He continued to hone his skills and develop his musical identity, drawing inspiration from his surroundings and personal experiences. His dedication and hard work paid off when he released his debut mixtape, the DOA Tape, on November 5th, 2021. The mixtape quickly gained traction and reached the number one spot on the Heat Seekers albums chart, solidifying K Flock's position as a rising star in the hip hop drill scene. The mixtape showcased his versatility as an artist, with tracks that range from hard hitting drill anthems to introspective and thought provoking songs. It resonated with listeners, propelling him to the top of the charts and solidifying his position as a rising star. One of the standout tracks from the mixtape was Is You Ready, a high energy and infectious song that showcased K Flock's ability to command the attention of his audience. The track garnered widespread praise and was named one of the top 28 songs of 2021 by journalist John Karamanica. This recognition further cemented K Flock's status as a force to be reckoned with in the hip hop drill scene. Another notable achievement in K Flock's career was the release of Being Honest, a track that sampled Changes by XXX Ten to See On. The song struck a chord with listeners, with its introspective lyrics and emotional delivery. It was praised for its authenticity and vulnerability, drawing comparisons to renowned artists like G. Herbo. Being Honest was included in Pitchfork's Top 38 Rap Songs of 2021 and Top 100 Songs of 2021, solidifying K-Flock's place among the industry's elite. Collaborations have played a significant role in K-Flock's career, allowing him to showcase his versatility and expand his reach. In October, he was featured on Lil Che's hit song, Not In The Mood, which also included Fivio Foreign. The track reached number 61 on the Billboard Hot 100, exposing K Flock to a wider audience and further establishing his presence in the mainstream music scene. K Flock's talent and unique style have drawn comparisons to other prominent drill rappers like King Von and Pop Smoke. During an interview with XXL, he expressed his admiration for these artists and how they influenced his own music. Asian Doll, another rapper, even stated that King Von would have been a fan of K Flock, highlighting the impact he has made on the industry. In April 2022, K Flock achieved yet another milestone with the release of Shake It, a collaboration with Dougie B and Cardi B, featuring Bory 300. The track quickly climbed the charts and peaked at number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100. Its infectious beat and catchy lyrics resonated with listeners, further solidifying K-Flock's position as a rising star. K-Flock's early life and upbringing in the Bronx shaped his music and provided him with a unique perspective that resonates with his audience. His journey from a challenging neighborhood to the top of the charts is a testament to his resilience and determination. And now, the young rapper seems to have had a change of heart while behind bars. Behind the scenes, K Flock has been grappling with the weight of his actions and the consequences they have had on his life and the lives of others. In a heartfelt Instagram post, he expressed remorse and apologized to his fans, his family, and those he had lost in the streets. It was a moment of vulnerability that showcased his willingness to confront his past and seek redemption. But K Flock's journey took an even more tragic turn. While incarcerated, he experienced the devastating loss of two of his brothers to gun violence. Unable to say goodbye or be there for them in their final moments, he was left with a profound sense of grief and a renewed determination to make a difference. It is this personal pain and the desire to prevent others from experiencing similar tragedies that fuels K Flock's mission. He refuses to let his past define him, instead using his platform and influence to advocate for change. Through his Stop the Violence campaign, K Flock aims to inspire the youth to make better choices and break the cycle of violence that plagues many communities. He believes that by coming together and moving as one, they can create a better and safer world for future generations. K Flock's commitment to this cause is evident in his actions. In a recent video clip, he is seen standing alongside a little girl, offering her support and encouragement. It is a powerful reminder that change starts with individual acts of kindness and compassion. Flock also made sure to highlight that Sevside is not a gang, but a family and a music group that's been utilized to change their lives through rap. As we've seen in other high-profile rap Rico cases, it will only be a matter of time until co-defendants cop a plea deal. And if, when that happens, K Flock will undoubtedly be among the first to be taken down. However, a close affiliate of the rapper and co-defendant Sticky stated that he won't bend or 
fold under pressure. He said that the prosecutors attempted to get him to flip, which he declined and vowed to take his case to trial. Sticky shared a photo of himself and Kay Flock vowing to stay down, even if it results in a life sentence. Fought it rolling loud together, guess we gotta fight these people together, he wrote. It's all fun and games till them people come. They said tell us about Kevin, help yourself, 30 years is a long time. Well guess I'll see you in 30 years. Though many commended Sticky's loyalty to Flock during this trying time, it seems that both are preparing for an uphill battle. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.